Hey gear seekers, I'm Nick. If you're wondering why our RTX 4080 coverage is late, it's for a few reasons. Firstly, Nvidia didn't send us a founder's card, which is a bit odd, but whatever, it happens. Also, Nvidia does not supply us with Linux drivers pre-launch, so it's impossible to test some of the things that we usually do when we make videos like this. You guys get that, right? But I also know that some people don't care about Linux, but I do, because as we've shown in the past, cards behave differently in both Windows and Linux. And remember the capacitors with the 30 series? We discovered it was the drivers and not capacitors because of Linux. As a tool for testing, Linux is very useful. And the last reason is I wanted to see what availability was gonna be like. With saying all that, let's take a look at the MSI RTX 4080 Supreme X. As far as availability, there seems to be every single card from every board partner in stock here in Australia. And in the US and across the globe, the stock seems to be good as well. I don't know what happened with Newegg and I've seen a bit of drama there, but more on that later. There's a lot of data to unpack with this video and if you want to understand our entire testing methodology, there's a link to our RTX 4090 Founders Edition review that explains every single thing that we do in detail. I want to try and keep this video short and sweet as possible. Now there's chapters in all of our videos, so if you want to jump to a certain section of a video, it's as easy as mousing over the progress bar or checking the timestamps down there in the description. But also, make sure you watch the whole video to get the context of what we're trying to say in this video. Now we're not covering overclocking in this video as we never cover overclocking in any of our videos. We show the out of the box figures because most people We'll put the GPU in their system and play games. The graphs are weighted based on the performance of the cards we're not focusing on from our new GPU testing database. We're actually not done with testing all of our GPUs. I've been doing it in our downtime. We also have a new test bench for this as well, which gives you guys accurate results based on the testing of all of the hardware being with the same test bench. Now, the results for all these videos will vary from outlet to outlet because almost everyone has different testing methodology. We're also rebuilding our Linux database at the moment, so we don't have many results for Linux GPU testing at the moment. What we do have, we're gonna show in this video, but let's kick it off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. As usual, you can use that magic pause button at any time during the video to look at these graphs for longer and to make comparisons between Windows and Linux. The first thing you're probably noticing, even with this 1080p benchmark, is the 4080 is not the fastest GPU in the pack. It's slightly faster than the 3090, and the data here, because it's CPU bound, can be all over the place. So take what you're seeing here with a grain of salt. If you're buying 4080, you're not playing 1080p games, right? Think about that. In Linux at 1080p, we are also CPU bound here and we're seeing the 4080 Supreme X sitting toe to toe with both 4090s that we have here and that we've tested. At 1440p, we're seeing the 4080 Supreme X pull right ahead of the 3090 Ti, which is to be expected when we become more GPU bound and less CPU bound. At 1440p in Linux, we're seeing the 4080 sitting about 30 frames per second faster than the 3090 Ti and about 26 FPS behind the 4090. This is about the result that we're expecting to see here with this benchmark. At 4K, we're seeing the same result again with the 4080 sitting dead squat in the middle of the 4090 and 3090 Ti. No surprises here. And as you're about to see, it's about to get really boring and really repetitive with these results. In Linux at 4K, we're seeing the exact same thing once again being echoed, right? This is the story with this GPU right there in the middle. All right, time for Unige and Superposition. We do three tests in total here. We do 4K Optimize, we do 1080p Extreme, and a custom 1440p preset with depth of field and motion blur turned off. First up with the 1080p Extreme benchmark. This one is highly GPU bound, and we're seeing that the MSI RTX 4080 Supreme X sit right between the 3090 and the 4090. <laughs> Guys, this is the trend here with this entire video. This is what you signed up for. At 1080p Extreme in Linux, we are also seeing the exact same thing being echoed with the gap between the 4090 and 30Ti on each side being almost equal. At 1440p Custom, we see exactly the same thing being echoed again with the 4080 right in the middle of the 4090 and 3090Ti. It's kind of boring to see this result over and over again, but it's what you guys wanna see. 
At 1440p custom in Linux, it's the same story again, although this time with the 4080, it's sitting a little bit further away from the 4090, so something slightly different. At 4K though, the 4090 does what the 4090 do, and stomps the 4080 into oblivion. The 4090 truly is a ridiculously OP card. At 4K in Linux, it's more of the same with the 4080 sitting right in the middle of the 4090 and 3090 Ti. Pretty boring, right? Same thing over and over. All right, on to Cyberpunk 2077. And this is where it starts to get a little bit interesting at least because FSR is supported on both Nvidia and AMD GPUs. We tested at high settings with FSR turned on and in quality mode with no ray tracing to even out the playing field. Let's start off with 1080p. As per usual, at 1080p, it turns out that the 4080 isn't any faster than the 3090 Ti. And notice that the AMD GPUs beat the Nvidia cards at 1080p. And we've seen this behavior many times with AMD GPUs and Cyberpunk, both with FSR enabled and disabled. So that's just the story at 1080p. We, we don't know why it does it. At 1080p in Linux, the results are all over the place and we retested this many times and I'm just gonna put this one down to Proton in Linux. I'm not saying that these results are bad because they're not. The game is super playable at 1080p. It's just the results are kind of broken here and that's kind of what we're seeing with these intermittent updates with Cyberpunk. We did retest everything and it, yeah, it, this is just how it is. However, at 1440p, the MSI RTX 4080 Supreme X in Windows makes a bit more sense with the results once again sitting right in between the 4090 and 3090 Ti. And the AMD cards fall very short, but not by much, right? I'm just trying to make a little bit of drama here. At 1440p in Linux, the results are basically the same across the board within a margin of error, and the 1080p results sometimes being worse than the 1440p results. Again, this is probably down to Proton and the drivers and yeah, you know, it's not actually running natively, so it's fine. At 4K, we're seeing the 4080 once again get stomped by the 4090. The 4080 result here is much closer to the 3090 Ti than it is to the 4090. I hope that makes sense. And at Linux at 4K, we're seeing the same result being echoed again that we saw with Windows at 4K as well, with the 4080 Supreme X being closer to the 3090 Ti than the 4090 result. All right. Let's move on to Horizon Zero Dawn. This is a pretty popular benchmark to test since it's really good at exposing both strengths and weaknesses. Let's take a look. At 1080p in Horizon Zero Dawn, the 6900 XT is the fastest of the batch being about 5% faster than both 4090s and the 4080 Supreme X. We saw this with Cyberpunk, however, the delta here is not as large. In Linux at 1080p, the results are similar in the way that this is super CPU bound and we basically see it the same way across the board within a margin of error, so it's not that interesting. Like I said, you're not buying 4080 for 1080p. Moving on to 1440p, we're still somewhat CPU bound and the 4080 Supreme X performs as expected. In Linux of 1440p, we're seeing the same thing with the 4080 sitting right between the 4090 and 3090 Ti. At 4K, we're seeing both the ASUS and Founders Edition 4090s pulling well ahead of the MSI RTX 4080 Supreme X. There's no surprise here, really. And lastly, at 4K in Linux, we're seeing the same result here again. It's getting pretty repetitive at this point, and I'm sure you'll all understand exactly where the 4080 is positioned in the market. We're not making this up. This is just how it performed. We've got one more set of benchmarks. We're doing Basemark GPU. Basemark gives us a great indication of Vulkan performance in both Windows and Linux. However, on this occasion, we've had quite a few issues with Basemark running in Linux. So we're not including the Linux results here because some cards work and some don't at this point in time. We will go back and retest this, but for now, this is what you get, Windows only. At 1080p, we're seeing the MSI RTX 4080 Supreme X sitting behind the RTX 4090 Founders Edition by about 200 FPS. Be aware though, Basemark has a very, very high FPS score. So just grain of salt. Remember what I said before, grain of salt, right? A little bit of grain of salt. At 1440p, we're seeing the gap between the 4090 and 4080 not be as large, but still quite a significant gap. Lastly, at 4K, we're seeing the exact same result again, 
It's been a bit of a marathon with all these benchmarks, basically saying the exact same thing over and over again for the past like 10 minutes or however long this is gonna take to get to this part of the video. Now we did run our one hour stress test in Ida64 and we couldn't get the MSI RTX 4080 Supreme X above 59 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. We also recorded the memory temperature here as well and we didn't see that rise above 70 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. Now, there's a couple things to take into account here. We are running on an open air test bench and the results in a closed system will be different from what we observed here. We do this the same way every single time with an open air test bench because it's repeatable and we can control the environment and it's consistent. Be aware, these new 40 series cards from what we've seen, the coolers have been absolutely over engineered so they all run relatively cool, which is nice to see, but they're just way too big. As far as power consumption though, we observed that hitting a board power draw maxing out at around 320 watts at full load over that stress testing period of about one hour. And this is about what we should expect from this card as the reference spec is also 320 watts. So it's right there. We observed the MSI RTX 4080 Supreme X to be near silent over our stress testing period with zero coil wine. Again, open air test system, you're gonna hear everything in a closed system. You're probably just not going to hear this card at all. And remember, we do these acoustic observations because it makes more sense than holding something up to a card and recording the decibels of how loud something is because most of you are going to wear headphones, so it just doesn't really matter that much. Hot take, but absolutely true. Comment down below if you don't game with headphones, right? The MSI RTX 4080 Supreme X is an absolute behemoth of a card and it is much bigger than the previous generation cards at around 336 millimeters in length. And it's got RGB accents all over the card and the overall design of this card is pretty striking and it looks really cool. It also features the 16 pin power connector. Remember guys, plug in your power cables properly. It's not just gonna randomly catch on fire. There isn't also a lot to say about the 4080 after it being out for a few days as well because Everything that I need to say has been said, except for this, right? The stock levels are really good and that's not an indication of there being a lot of stock of this card. It's more about the fact that there's a lot of cards because no matter which version you're looking at, they're just too expensive and no one actually wants to buy 4080. Now, it doesn't make sense to buy 4080 even. Yeah, the performance is better than a 3090 Ti, but it's hardly worth it when you can spend a little bit more and try and get yourself a 4090 for way more performance. And this is a bit of a reality check for Nvidia that is much needed. You don't have to constantly drive prices up and then blame inflation. The statement Nvidia made saying that GPU is only gonna get more expensive is rubbish. That's what they want you to believe, but it's not true at all. All we have to do is look at AMD with the announcement of their new Radeon RX 7900 XTX and the 7900 XT to see that Nvidia is trying to invent a price point in which it just doesn't have any business doing. And you can check out our thoughts on the upcoming Radeon 7900 XTX and XT from our Vegas coverage in the link in the description with Gordon from PC World. You might find some interesting stuff in there. That's not even really the issue with the 4080 though. Nvidia announcing a 12 gig variant that was not even technically a 4080 was a real noob noob from Nvidia. It was so bad that they unlaunched their own card. In Vegas, I actually got to play with the 7900 XTX playing games. And from what I saw, it looked impressive. However, everything was locked, frame rates were locked, everything like that. I kind of hope that the 7900 XTX lives up to what AMD is claiming here because it will make Nvidia realize that they don't control the gaming market. If history is anything to go by, and if we look to almost 20 years ago with the Nvidia FX series GPUs, and I'm sure Nvidia wants to forget this whole thing as well, they were a massive failure in regards to price and performance, and the then ATI, which is now AMD, beat them on both fronts. Could history be repeating itself? I think it's too early to say, but on the 13th of December, 2022, we're gonna have our answer. So if you're interested in the MSI RTX 4080 Supreme X, it's going for around 1,379 US dollars or around, wait for it, 2,759 Aussie dollars at the time of filming. Now, if you want my advice though, and I don't really say this too often, but on this occasion, 
I would absolutely wait to see what the performance of the 7900 XCX is before dropping a house deposit worth of money on an overpriced card from Nvidia, right? At the end of the day, all I'm doing is I'm giving you the numbers that we found with these benchmarks and these tests. It's up to you to make the decision on whether or not it's something you're actually interested in. I can't make you do anything. You spend your own hard earned money any way you like. But if I can make you do anything, it would be to make you subscribe. So do that, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. And please let us know what you think of the 4080. It's, it's an odd card. It's, it's weird. It's expensive. I, wait for the 7900 XTX. No, AMD didn't sponsor me to make this video the way it is, but I honestly just want to see the performance and it's in your best interest just to wait. Like, how, how long is it? Like two and a bit weeks or three weeks or whatever? Just wait, guys, please, please. So then we can ha know the whole story. Otherwise, yeah. Thanks for watching, I guess. Sorry.